Hey there, thanks so much for joining me on Dynamo BIM. On this episode of Dynamo Shorts, we're gonna back up just a bit and talk a little bit more about data types. In particular, strings, numbers or integers, and Booleans. In addition to that, we're also going to talk about code blocks, which has honestly been a little bit difficult <laughs> to not teach you up until this point. But I did wanna give you guys a few Dynamo Short episodes to really tease you, to really show you how Dynamo can just change your Revit usage day to day, make you much more efficient, and show you that it's really not that complicated. So now that we're understanding that Dynamo is awesome and we wanna learn more, let's talk a little bit more about some fundamentals in Dynamo. So once again, we've talked about numbers or integers, right? A number with decimals or without, an integer is a whole number. A string, which is a sequence of characters, so letters, numbers, special characters, etc. Booleans, which is essentially a value with, with two possible outcomes. So yes, no, true, false, zero, one. So with Booleans, let's talk a little bit about what we can do with them and how they're used in Revit. Because we actually within Revit have many parameters with checkboxes, parameters that are a yes, no type. One of these, which many of us probably interface with, regardless of our discipline, is a sheet parameter called appears in sheet list. And you can see within Dynamo, it actually reports itself as yes. If the box were unchecked, it would report as no, right? And one reason why we use Dynamo is because this value isn't even a value that you can schedule with the sheet for whatever reason. So once again, a wonderful practical reason as to why we would use Dynamo to interface with this parameter, which happens to be a Boolean. So now that we know what a Boolean is, let's talk a little bit more in Dynamo about what we can do with some advanced data types and code box. So here within input, you can see we have basic inputs, some date and time inputs, locations, etc. So lots of different input types or data types. Um, once again, three main ones we're going to talk about. First off, numbers, number sliders, and integer sliders. Um, one thing to note about these guys is that they do have a drop down here, so you can change the max values, the step values, what have you, make them a little bit more user friendly for you. Um, but we can actually start to add these values together, subtract them, etc. Evaluate these numbers in some way. And you can see under math, we have some operators. So maybe we want to add these values together. You can see that this particular node only has two inputs. Uh, because I have this script on automatic, you can see that the changes are dynamic and as the values are changed within the sliding values or in the number values, my numbers automatically change. However, what happens if I want to add more than two values? What we can do is we can start to look at functions. There is a function called math sum. And of course, I could search for this as well. Relatively easy to search for, luckily, right? If I come in here, I can find the math function of sum quite easily. Same thing with plus. I can also right click in my my canvas and search for it and you can see that the plus function comes up pretty easily. Now you can you said Dana, you said that you were gonna add multiple values. This takes one value, right? Well what we can start to do is we can add a list together. We're gonna add a list of values together as we've done in previous episodes, right? List generate first node under that subcategory is list.create. And you can see that there's a little plus sign here where we can start to add items to this node so that we can essentially tell it how many values to have in that list. So I can send this list to the values and you can see now I get the 
the sum of all three values. Now, once again, when we have number values, there's a lot of different things that we would like to do. For example, with Dynamo Player. Dynamo Player is a really wonderful tool to use to allow multiple people to interface with your scripts. And you can see here the number slider, for example, within this core attractor point Dynamo script, which comes with Dynamo out of the box. When you click on the edit inputs icon, you get some inputs to interface with. However, when you use code blocks, they cannot be input values. So just one thing to note when we're working with code blocks as we move through and learn about advanced data types and how we can manipulate them, um, when we are wanting to interface with these within Dynamo Player, we'll want to stick with some of these core inputs. You can see that it allows me to specify it as is input. However, um, to interface with code blocks, I can right click on my canvas and search for a code block, or I can simply double click in the canvas and it brings me up a code block. Once again, something that is used very frequently within Dynamo and something that if you guys have watched previous episodes, I have fumbled and created accidentally, not meaning to. So with a code block, we can have this represent a number by just simply typing in a number and you can see within the code block that value is shown blue which basically lets me know as the user that it is a number we can use a double or a number with decimals not an integer right and we can simply add this to our list maybe we want to add this to our sum of values you can see it reads that as a number one wonderful thing that we can do with code blocks as well, mathematical functions within them. It is actually a block to write script or design script within. Uh, so if I come in here and I write 45 plus 3.71, you can see here, it starts to do the math for me automatically right there within that output. One wonderful thing also is that we can start to call for variables. Right? Maybe I want my user to specify a value in there. I can actually input a integer slider or some other input for my number. And you can see here that it adds that X value to my values, right? As I change this value, you can see once again, it dynamically changes. Something that we can do with a code block as well is create multiple outputs or create a list with a code block. So to do this, once again, double clicking in my canvas, I'm going to create my multiple outputs by typing in multiple values with semicolons at the end, hitting enter, and you can see it allows me to break the line so that I can add multiple values here to my outputs. You can see if I do not put a semicolon, Dynamo does not like that. So by adding the semicolon, I then get three output values that I can do whatever I want with, right? Maybe I need to feed them to different things. I want to have multiple outputs just in one single block. Very easy to do. Another thing that we can do is we can create a list of values using the left and right brackets to essentially enclose these values. And rather than semicolons, I'm going to use commas to separate the values. So continue on and end with a right bracket. And you can see that gives me a list of values. These values can also be uh, broken if you'd like, if that's easier for you to read. Um, and so the comma will allow you to break the line as well and the code block will still read it as a list once again because of the left and right brackets so with that let's talk a little bit about strings and what we can do with string values and code blocks as we know we can come in and we can go to input basic there's string once again characters assembled together, whether they are 
letters, numbers, or special characters. Maybe I want to concatenate these values together. Um, I can do that with the math function here. And you can see that string values, rather than being added together as they are treated as characters, get concatenated together. This is the same thing also if I were to concatenate a number value with a string. Dynamo will automatically concatenate these values together. With a code block and strings, what we can do is we can start to have strings essentially within quotations. So this is limited, obviously, if for whatever reason the string value that you need to represent has quotations, a code block will not work. Um, however, if I want to call cat456, I can do that very easily as a string within a code block by encasing it within quotations and place that value and you can see that it allows it to be used as a string within the interface. Booleans can also be retrieved under the basic input or right click search for Boolean. Uh, very easy to get to luckily. And you can see here that there is two options, true and false. With a code block, I can simply type in true, and you can see that it represents itself in purple, and false also in purple, which lets me know that it's a Boolean value. Maybe I need to ask two values whether they are greater than one another, or the other is greater than the other, right? Um, I can do that quite easily by plugging two numbers into a greater than value, and you can see that the outcome is a Boolean. Thanks for joining me today on Dane Mobim. I'll see you next time.